Hi, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I'm just kind of responding to what I'm seeing out there and on comments and this seems to be kind of what everyone talks about um, and what I'm seeing is that we're heading uh, once again to uh, well, not an unexceptional year, but certainly um, things have suddenly uh, got a lot better, seemingly, um, from all the narrative that I'm talking about. But that's not what I'm seeing. And I'm just trying to work out how every year we see a major melt in, melt in July and then often into August. And then suddenly the melt slows down so that we have an unexceptional year. Um, so we had a, uh, what I call a cyclone, because the uh, cyclone of 2012 went down to 969 hectopascals, whereas the, um, uh, the, the storm in the weekend went down to 975 or 970 hectopascals so that's not very far removed and everyone is just sort of they look at the wind speeds on null school and i don't know what to make of that but um that what i take it is is, is the air pressure and then the results so when i identified areas near the north pole where the ice is clearly uh breaking up people well, some people seem to purport not to notice it and uh, they just look at sea ice extent and they don't go beyond that but um, yeah this doesn't really reflect but this breakup is within just a couple of hundred kilometers of of the North Pole and with um, and then when the, when they measure the uh, sea ice extent, it's anything uh, more than 15%. So I just wonder when they see stuff like this or or, or, or the picture that it has showed, um, whether it's just thrown into the equation as sea ice extent, uh, despite the fact clearly it's all um, breaking down. So I just, this is... Uh, Another picture that I picked up from a sea ice uh, forum uh, from yesterday uh, that is gives a quite good indication of, of how uh, it looks. And then these are just a couple of the comments. Uh, so heat is radiating out from the cloud tops and above. So the polar atmosphere is becoming increasingly unstable as we move into September. The models are struggling to capture what's happening more than three or four days out. But there's still the potential to melt out dispersed ice on the Siberian side of the pole. But the horse race is now for the second or third position. Uh, it's a good thing that 212 is looking, unbe is looking unbeatable. Uh, the fires in Siberia and the Amazon have been depressing enough. We don't need to see any new sea ice records this year to get the message across that the climate is in trouble. Well this is very good but it leads it leaves out whole areas of the narrative uh, such as uh, what's happening from underneath which I think is actually uh, crucial. So let's look at uh, sea ice thickness. Uh, so this is the latest uh, data that we have. Um, so it shows that uh, most of the ice here is between half a meter and at most one meter thick. You've got some at the blue is in uh, in um, is is, is uh, between one and one point five. Uh, so there's nothing very thin there. So that's the latest data, and let's just go back a little way. Um, this is on the oops the eighteenth uh, of August. Uh, so that was before 
the um, yeah, before the cyclone. So uh, there's a little bit more of this blue, I think, closer to the pole. Um, and this is at the beginning of August. Uh, so you can see the change. So I'm going backwards. And this is going back to uh, uh, mid-July. So the, um, the ice is quite a bit uh, thinner then. So I would say that the uh, thickness of the ice uh, has not really slowed down. Um, but it's just sort of holding its holding its own would be my interpretation. Uh, uh, the melt season. So now we go beyond the melt season and by this time of course it's getting dark um, around the, uh, uh, the North Pole but you can see that the ice thickness it's not really thickening it's it, it's it's holding its own remember last year was the year when finally all this old ice uh, that was pushed into the north of Greenland finally uh, separated from the coastline uh, that was a bit of a sh shocker I can remember it to this day and we'll just go uh, on a bit further into uh, uh, yeah the beginning of November, so that's really getting in to uh, to the summer. So you can see how the ice is uh, ex ex expanding, uh, but the thickness is uh, remaining roughly the same. It's somewhere kind of between the half to one meter to two uh, one and a half meter thick. So um, that's the rough position. Now I'm just going to, I've gone back uh, and I just want to play some highlights and allow Margot uh, from last year to explain the context of all of this. And they're still too warm up there and there's still a lot of mixing going on with the ocean from the Atlantic and from the Pacific coming in and it's much warmer than the Arctic Ocean and so we still have this mixing going on underneath and so in spite of the temperatures falling now and the sun going down and so we're headed into darkness in the Arctic it's not quite there yet but it's getting there very soon in spite of all of that, we have this warmer water underneath and eating away at the edges of the sea ice. And so it's it's like the, in a tug of war, it's in this battle trying to reform, but you know, this warmer and saltier water is is trying to eat away at it and it's coming up underneath and it's trying to freeze and you know, so I don't know how thick it's gonna gonna be. I don't expect it to be very thick at all. And also what you're going to see from the Navy view is that it's still been thinning even though it's been refreezing and the extent is coming back, it's still been thinning in these thicker areas. I'm going to show you that as well too. So we're not out of the woods even though we did not have the Blue Ocean event this year. I have the Arctic pulled up and I just wanted to do a comparison while I'm here. <clears throat> 
and I showed you how to do comparisons last time. So we're going to start the comparison. And what we can do, what I want to do is 2017. Let's look at the sea ice where it was November 3rd from 2017. And we can see even last year it had come back a lot more than it already has this year. And if I slide this arrow over, here it is this year. And here it is this time last year. And the blue means it's less concentrated. So we can see that we're, where we are this time, this time, this year, it's, it's splotchy with the refreeze and it's not very concentrated and not very thick. So, let's look at 2016. 2016, we had low sea ice as well. And it, even though the refreeze here on 2016 was not very concentrated, it was already all the way up to the Siberia coast there in the Laptev Sea, which we don't have it's not, it's just not coming back the way we'd hoped it, it would be. But this is what happens when you have abrupt climate change. I don't know why that's not showing. Okay, here's November 4th from 2015. And look how much better the refreeze was there even in 2015. It's more white and there's more ice all the way up along the coast there of Russia. And also um, it's refrozen along Greenland on the north side and the east side and all of Canada and most of Alaska. That was only three years ago. Here's 2014. Look at how much better it was freezing even in 2014. It was coming over into the Kara Sea and over by Novaya Zemlya and down by Svalbard. So that's a big difference in four years. Look. So that's a huge difference. So let's come back. To 2018. And I'm going to stop the comparison. And now I'm going to take off the blue marble layer and I'm going to take off the sea ice layer and this is what's visible on the satellite. So I think uh, Marco more or less uh, sums it up there um, that as of last year and uh, I'm presuming that this is going to happen again this year uh, that it takes uh, a long time for the ice to come back. Uh, there might be some rapid growth of some uh, thin ice, but the conditions that are eroding uh, the ice from underneath uh, continue. So whatever we end up with um, at the end of this uh, melt season, is what we will um, what will be inherited for uh, uh, for next year. So it just um, generally it gets worse and worse with every year. And uh, I don't think that just looking as people do at the uh, 
um, at the CI's extent uh, data and regarding it as some sort of uh, horse race uh, really gets to the essence of, of, of things. Um, and I think what happened, uh, what was shown the other day, the sea ice loss uh, in that central uh, Arctic Basin is absolutely unprecedented. We've never seen that before. It's just as radical as what happened last year with the uh, old sea ice uh, retreating away from the uh, coasts of Greenland. So, um, yeah, lots of... Uh, competing narratives and a lot of confusion uh, and I try to just go uh, book by what I can see because everything is changing there uh, right in front of us. So uh, anyway, I'm just doing my best. Uh, this is Seymour Rocks uh, reporting uh, from Down Under.